Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sitting on the ground because I have all kinds of books around me and it, it was easier to film it like this. Um, and we're going to do a book haul. So I don't usually do book hauls on this channel because I do not buy so many books in a small period of time. But once a year I receive a lot of books for Christmas and New Year because in Russia we also give uh, presents for New Year. So it's a tradition that we're still doing even though we're not living in Russia. But yeah, New Year, Christmas and I also have my birthday in December. So that means um, that most of my presents, they're mostly books. So I get a lot of books and also the gift cards that I get, I uh, spend on books. So in December and January, I receive a lot of books. I buy <laughs> more books than normally. And that's why we're doing this video. I'm going to show you all of the new purchased gifted books that I have. And some of them you will see uh, later on in my videos when I review them and read them. Um, but I cannot read <laughs> all of them this year. It's uh, more than 40 books uh, that I'm going to show you today. And uh, yeah, I will just go through it. Uh, they're not in a particular order, but I have divided some into categories. I have some Penguin classics and I have some uh, genre fiction. So science fiction and horror mostly, mostly horror and a couple of science fiction. So uh, you can expect all kinds of books in this video and I'm go just going to go through them and show them to you. And some of them I am currently reading or want to read soon. So I will point that out. I will start with the Penguin Classics. I have a couple of those. First one is uh, Russian Thinkers by Isaiah Berlin. And um, there is not a lot of information on Russian philosophy. And I'm interested in philosophy. So I wanted to know more about Russian philosophy. And there is not uh, much written on it. But it's usually uh, mentioned in literature. Like by Dostoevsky or other writers. So I think this book, yeah, it's kind of gives an overview of Russian thinkers and philo Russian philosophers. Berlin addresses the great Russian minds of the 19th century, like Herzen, Bakunin, Belinsky, Tolstoy, Turgenev, and as well as uh, exploring the political and social revolutions they aspired and are responsible to. So I think it's interesting, especially if you're interested in philosophy and politics of some time period in Russia, then this is a nice book to start in. Then I have a uh, book of uh, selected poems by Lord Byron and um, yeah, I do not read a lot of poetry but I want to get into it and Lord Byron is an um, I think an interesting writer to start out with I've read some of his poems last year and I liked them so I wanted to have the selected um, edition of Penguin Classics then uh, a book called uh, New Slime by Jens Peter Jacobsen uh, I think it's a Danish author and if it's true then it will be the first Danish author on my shelf so that's, that's nice and this book is mentioned by uh, Rainer Maria Rilke in his letters to a young poet and according to him this is one of the best books um, in the world so I was interested to read it I didn't put it on my list because I, I wasn't intended to read it soon but my father he heard that I liked uh, letters to a young poet and so he bought this book for me as a surprise to um, read it as well so that one I think I will try it's not too long so I think I will try to read it this year then I have The Monk by Matthew Lewis I think this is like a classic horror story so I'm quite excited to read uh, horror classics it's not that they're always so super interesting but uh, it's nice to know what's already have been done and what has inspired and there is a lot of like, controversy I think about this book especially in the time that it was written so yeah I'm I'm interested to start reading it I don't know when I'm going to pick it up though then I have the penguin book of ghost stories and it includes Elizabeth Gosko and Ambrose Beer Ambrose Beers but also a lot of other writers and yeah I love ghost stories and I like to find out new authors to <laughs> read more horror and ghost stories from there's also Sheridan Le Fanu in here he wrote Carmilla which I read recently and of Cardio Hearn which I also like to read a lot of I think Henry James a lot of good authors in here so I'm quite excited to start reading it and I think I will try to read it towards um, like autumn this year so September October maybe then I have another uh, poems um, collection, which is collect the complete poems of William Blake. I think also a very interesting and famous poet that I just want to try read some poems. These are not books that I'm going to read from cover to cover, 
but once in a while reading some poems i think that's um uh, enjoyable and then the last one are letters from russia by astolf de Kostin. i think i pronounced these all of these names very incorrectly but um it's um i don't know what exactly this book is about well it's uh, like a travel history of uh this person that went to russia in a uh, time of 1839 um but yeah i'm it's mostly about i think politics of the time and how people live so i thought it was interesting um but i have to discover more uh, about this book so those were all penguin classics and then i have um three cla uh, oxford classics world classics i also like these editions for some of the books and i have julius caesar by william shakespeare i want to start reading shakespeare and um i have one edition of like um what was it macbeth in penguin classics and i understand that the oxford editions are better and I think I agree, there's like more background information in here than in the Penguin Classics. So that's why I have this one in another edition. And another Shakespeare is A Twelve Night, which I wanted to read last year, but I didn't. So now uh, maybe I will read it this year or I just, um, or just read it someday, but I have it in my collection now. And also Selected Letters by Charlotte uh, Bronte, one of my favorite authors, and I was excited to read her letters about her life. Her life was known for a lot of hardship. Uh, her sisters died, of course, prematurely, and she as well. So she writes a lot about the lives that she had, and I'm interested in it. So that's why I asked it as a present. Then some books that I didn't uh, put in any category. So just going quickly through them. Um, Miko Kawakami, Breast and X. At first I didn't know if I wanted to read this book, but I hear a lot of good takes about it. And I am interested in contemporary Japanese literature and Japanese literature um, in general. So I think um, I have to try it out. According to New York Times, it's a notable book of the year, um, of 2020. And yeah, a lot of people like this book so i was interested in it then a book by noam chomsky who wrote the world i really like noam chomsky's writing i read so far two of his books or only one one but yeah i i like his writing i like his essays and his way of explaining politics or certain concepts so i think this one is also interesting to read more about world politics so um yeah i don't know when i'm going to start it but i think maybe also this year i will also read another book from him which is on palestine by uh, him and also ilan pape and this one i want to read pretty soon so i think next month if i like this one as well then probably i will read the all noam chomsky this year so two noam chomsky i think that's it and then i have vasily grossman this one is in dutch and it's about life and destiny i will put the actual english translation somewhere here but um yeah i was interested in his work as well he's a very big author uh, from russia and he writes a lot about world war ii and history so yeah and this is like well, his masterpiece of his life so i wanted to read it then i have all the essays of george orwell i also like his writing and i wanted to have like a collection of all of his essays um just to <laughs> read once in a while in it it's also, I think, a book that I'm not going to read from cover to cover because it's huge and you don't always feel the need to read essays. But once in a while I do, and then um, I have this one. Then a non-fiction, a uh, little history of philosophy. The essays were, of course, are also non-fiction by um, Nigel Warburton. I have heard that this is an interesting book to get into philosophy by another YouTuber, uh, a Dutch YouTuber. His videos are in Dutch, but if you're interested, it's Flora Sleist. Uh, and he recommended this book to get into philosophy. Now, I'm already studying philosophy at the university, but sometimes I feel like I'm missing some of the um, basic concepts because I didn't do my bachelor's in philosophy, only my master right now. So maybe this book will help me out a little bit. I hope so. <laughs> then I have a book by Hermann Hesse, Steppenwolf. I read Siddhartha a couple of years ago and I loved it. And I understand that this book is just as good or sometimes so some people say even better so i'm i just want to read more of herman has work and i really liked the cover of this book this is a penguin modern classics edition which i think are pretty nice always oh and a third book by Noam chomsky i forgot about this one on language 
So Noam Chomsky, uh, except from writing about politics, he actually is known for his writing on uh, language because he was a linguist and um, philosopher in language, philosophy of language. So he had a lot of theories about language and um, how humans acquire language. So I was interested in his work. And one of the last courses that I did for my philosophy degree was about philosophy of language. We discussed Wittgenstein and sometimes Noam Chomsky will also come up in the discussions. But I didn't know that I would like it so much. I do like language learning, but it's very different from philosophy of language. It's not the same thing. Often it's not about language learning, but it's about like the meaning of language and how humans use language. Uh, so also pretty interesting, um, but it can also be quite dry stuff and uh, with weird concepts. Uh, Wittgenstein is not always easy to understand. So I'm hoping that Noam Chomsky will be more clear in his theories. And another book on, for philosophy is Meditations by uh, Marcus Aurelius. I think it's uh, like a classic to read if you're into philosophy. So um, yeah, I <laughs> wanted to read it. Then I have another uh, Japanese author, more like classic Japanese literature. And it's uh, Shusaku Endo. And the book is called The Schandal in Dutch, and I will look the English title up for you. But the um, original title in Japanese is Skiandaru, but I think <laughs> it would be easier if it was written in Japanese and not in uh, Romaji. But it, um, yeah, the original title is Skiandaru. I have not read Shushiko Endo. Um, I do own another book, Silence, by him, um, which I yeah haven't read yet. So I think I will read Silence first. And then this one, but um, I like to collect Japanese literature, so it's a nice addition. Then um, I have a book called The Slave by Isaac Bashevich Singer. And I don't know much about this book, uh, but it's uh, a winner of the Nobel Prize in literature. And yeah, it's always interesting to see what kind of books win this prize. So <laughs> I have to find out what this book is about. And a book by Niccolo Machiavelli. Um, the Ruler, I think, would be in the English translation, but it's also in Dutch. And um, yeah, I don't know much about this book as well, so I just have to figure it out when I start reading it. Then I have quite a big book. It's a collection of Ernest Hemingway. It's one of his biggest stories. So we have For Whom the, uh, For Whom the Bell Tolls, The Snows of Kilimanjaro, which I started reading. Uh, I haven't finished it. It's like a very short story, but I just started reading it a month ago. Uh, while I was waiting in a meeting uh, on Zoom and um, we had this break and I didn't know what to do so I started reading it and it's it's a very good story so I I want to finish it um, as soon as possible. <laughs> then Fiesta, The Short Happy Life of Francis Macomber, Across the River and Into the Trees and The Old Man in the Sea. When I was younger I read The Old Man in the Sea um, in Russian but um, yeah I didn't like it then. Uh, I didn't like reading it, so I have to reread it again in, in English, of course. But yeah, I think it's a good collection of one of his most famous stories. Then I have a book on criticism, which is uh, like criticism on literature, and it's called Anatomy of Criticism um, of Northrop, Northrop Fry. I'm sorry for the name pronunciation, um, but uh, this contains essays on literature and um, yeah, what is literature and what isn't, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of interested in reading books about books and why certain books are better than others. It doesn't mean that I don't enjoy books that are not classified as literature, because I do. But I think it's interesting to know more about how literature and books are appraised and why certain books have certain qualities and others don't. So I think this book will be nice to start out with. Someone on YouTube also recommended this book. Let me think. I will put the channel somewhere here. Uh, but um, he talks a lot about literature and uh, he recommended this book and I was very interested in reading it. Then I have a book by Ray Bradbury, which is not <laughs> fantasy or horror this time. It's his book on writing and it's called Zen in the Art of Writing. And I'm always like into books about writing, just like I'm into books about books. Um, last year I read a couple which were really good. So I because I like Ray Bradbury's writing, I hope he will share some of his advice. And it's again very short. So yeah, I think I will read this one soon, like maybe also next month or in March. Then I have The Islands by Gustav Herling. I don't know much about this book. Um, it was also a surprise gift 
um, but it sounds interesting and um, it's an important, I think, Polish author. I don't know for sure. I think Polish. Polish. Yeah. I need to find out more about this book when I start reading it. Then a book that I was very excited about because it was on the list of the, like, the best 100 books of Japanese literature, contemporary and classics. And I didn't know it, so I asked it um, for my birthday um, because, yeah, I really want to find out what the story of the book is. And it's by Yoko Tawada. Memoirs, mem memoirs, memoirs, memoirs of a polar bear, and um, I will read the small synopsis in here because it's I think it's very interesting. Three bears, the first a, a di diligent memoirist whose unlikely success forces her to flee Soviet Russia, the second her daughter, a skilled dancer in an East Berlin circus, and the third Knut, a baby bear born and raised in Berlin Zoo at the beginning of the 21st century. Here then is the enchanting story of three extraordinary bears uh, brought to life by one of Japan's most inventive and dazzling novelists. I mean, if you read this cover then, or back story, then uh, you kind of have to read it, right? I mean, it's about bears and I don't know what else, but it sounds very interesting. Let me <laughs> move for a little bit. Um, I'm not sitting very comfortably, but this was the well, like the easiest way of filming this video. Uh, otherwise, I didn't know how to uh, <laughs> surround myself with all of these books. Then another book which was recommended by a YouTuber that I watch often, like a booktuber, uh, Better Than Food, <laughs> is the channel called. I think I mentioned that earlier in my videos. Um, but he recommended The Talented Mr. Ripley by Patricia Heinspeed. And um, yeah, I liked his review, so I was excited for the book. And I finally have it. It's a nice cover as well, very minimalistic, but um, yeah, it doesn't give away what the book is about. So there's also nothing on the back. Yeah, so I just have to, uh, to find it out, to figure it out. Um, then another classic uh, Japanese literature book, which I am uh, really love the cover of. It's by Yunichiro Tanizaki, The Makioka Sisters. I, I just love this cover. It's so beautiful. <laughs> and um, uh, it's it's very big. I hope it's like this kind of generation stories. I always love those ones. Um, but again, I don't know much about this book. And I haven't read Tanizaki before. I owned, I also own two other books I did by him. But so far, I haven't read it. So this, I think I will start out with this one actually from all of his other books. I know that I have read the synopsis like months ago and um, it really stood out to me. So I think I will start with this one. Then I have a, a nonfiction by a neuroscientist about our consciousness. This one is also in Dutch, but it's by Antonio Damasio. Uh, and the book is called Ik voel dus ik ben, which means I feel so I am. Um, I will look up the English title. But yeah, it's, it sounds very interesting. I like reading about um, our brain, our consciousness and especially from like a philosophical perspective so i'm hoping that this book meets like on a philosophical level and also on a uh, scientific level so that would be interesting and uh, then i think the last book on philosophy which is letters from a stoic uh, by seneca i think i heard somewhere that uh, there's like a lot of uh interest in stoicism <laughs> in our time and people write new books about it of course but uh, it's better to start out with the ancients, the classics, uh, especially like with this book, uh, to get into the stoicism. It's not that I want to really get into the stoicism lifestyle, uh, but I just want to learn more about it. So I was interested in this book as well. I have two more Japanese literature books, which are um, The Woman in the Dunes by Kobo Abe. Um, don't know much about this book, but um, it should be a very good one. I haven't read anything from Kobo Abe so far, so um, I think I also will start out with this book because I do own another one from him. And then uh, more contemporary <laughs> Japanese literature, The Woman in the Purple Skirt by Natsuko, Nama, uh, sorry, um, Natsuko Imamura. I have heard a lot of good things about this book and even Sayaka Burata, who is one of my um, favorite contemporary Japanese author says it's very powerful. Uh, Yoko Gawa, another good author, uh, grip my heart, chilling. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, I think it, a lot of people are very positive about it. So <laughs> I think I am, because it's also short, I'm going to read it 
in February. I'm very excited for this one. And then the last one, which I wanted to read a couple of years ago when it uh, just came out, uh, but I didn't. And it's a Pulitzer Prize finalist, uh, The Idiot by Elif Batuman. I, again, I don't know the story behind this book, but at the time I looked it up and it sounded very interesting and a lot of people really enjoyed it. So um, I think it's not, not for nothing that it's a Pulitzer Prize uh, finalist and a national bestseller. So yeah, I'm, I'm just very interested in the story behind it. Also, because the title is quite bold, uh, The Idiot is also, of course, written by Dostoevsky. Yeah, it's quite bold to name your book this is the same way, so I'm interested if it has something to do with Dostoevsky. So yeah, I have to find it out. Then um, we're going into the genre fiction that I also love. And we have some very beautiful and interesting books. I have a couple of science fiction, so I do not read much science fiction. But once in a while, especially when it's like a more philosophical kind of science fiction, I'm interested in it. And I'll score. And of course, I have a lot of uh, new horror uh, authors or new horror books to find out. So uh, the first one is Ray Bradbury, not a new author, one of my one of my favorite authors, I think, in some way. I never classified him as my favorite author, but I actually enjoy all of his books. And it's The Illustrated Man. I understand these are short stories, and I just, yeah, so short stories, and I love short stories, so I cannot go wrong with this one, I think. Then uh, The Wasp Factory by Ian Banks. I wanted to read it this month, but I started out with another book which is also very interesting, I will show you next. Um, but I think when I um, finish that one, I will continue in this one. Um, again, the story is not very familiar to me, um, but uh, a lot of people say that it's like a really good thriller horror novel and it's very effectful. So I want to see it for myself and um, it's an author that I want to read more from. This will be then my first book, of course, from him. And then the book that I'm currently reading, which is The Shards by Brett Easton Ellis. This is the first book for me by Brett Easton Ellis. Um, I do own American Psycho, but I haven't read it yet. So this is the first time that I get into his writing. I'm not going to spoil it how I <laughs> like it so far. I will make a video about this book. But yeah, uh, right now I'm also reading it on my e-reader. So um, I read until chapter 5 in the physical book and then right now I'm, I'm on chapter 12 and um, because it's such a heavy book I like reading it on my e-reader so I purchased the book twice. Uh, this is the one that I bought myself uh, from one of the gift cards and I also bought the e-reader version. Yeah, so far it's, it's worth it. That's what I'm currently reading. Then I have a um, science fiction book that I think is also have, have been some philosophical concepts, which is uh, by Philip K. Dick, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? And I didn't know, I just saw it when the book <laughs> came, um, came in, that it's also the story behind Blade Runner. But I haven't watched Blade Runner ever, so I don't know what the story is about. It's still a mystery to me. But I hear that a lot of people uh, find this philosophical and that it's very inspirational and a good science fiction novel. So yeah, I, I really wanted to read it. Also, the cover. I really like these editions by SF Masterworks, science fiction masterworks. I do think they have beautiful covers. So yeah. Short book. Again, I like short books. If the story is good, I think it's better to tell it in a shorter format than explaining too much. Which is, I will give you a small spoiler, which is one of my critiques of this book. It's just too long, but it's still good, but too long. So yeah, short books, it's more my thing. Then I have uh, short stories. Love short stories and love Shirley Jackson. This is Dark Tales by her, and um, I've read so far three books and one collection of short stories. So yeah, I'm just excited for this one. Uh, I, I love her work. All of her stories so far are or very good or weird and still good. So yeah, Shirley Jackson is definitely one of my favorite authors. Then um, another science fiction and fantasy, I think which is the Earthsea, and this contains uh, four novels by Ursula K. Le Guin. I have owned, or still own, <laughs> Earthsea, two books. Um, I don't know in which order, but I got them as a child in Dutch, but I never got through them. So I want to 
read the first four books and see if it's something for me. Because again, it's a science fiction author that incorporates a lot of philosophical concepts and a lot of people say that it's um, it contains reflective moments in the stories and just like uh, deep thinking about certain subjects. So I'm, I'm curious um, how good it actually is. So as a child, I couldn't get through it and maybe that's because it was too difficult to read it at the time period. And I was more always into horror than into fantasy, uh, with some exceptions. So yeah, I just have to re-experience this book. Then again, short stories by one of my, like I said, favorite contemporary Japanese authors, who is Sayaka Murata, and uh, the collection is called Life Ceremony. Uh, so far I've read um, Convenience Store Woman and Earthlings. So Earthlings is very weird and more like horror. A kind of horror story but not exactly a more like dystopian and psychological but a convenience store woman i think it's a good one to get into her writing but yeah i'm excited for this one as well so she doesn't write horror per se but her stories always touch on something on some like weird psychological aspects of humans so i i like that in horror and i like that in books in general then i have one book from stephen king uh because i already own a lot of his books but this one I do own it in Dutch, but I wanted to have it in English and I want to reread it uh, and it's on writing, his non-fiction book about writing and a kind of like a memoir, biography, autobiography of his life. Um, I loved it when I read it in Dutch, but it's a while ago, I think like more than five years, um, maybe even longer. So I, I really want to revisit it and read it in English, in the original. And then an author that also is mentioned often um, when we're talking about like dark literature and also horror and it's um, Cormac McCarthy and this is Blood Meridian, one of his I think more famous books, something that I want to get into as well. A book that maybe some of you know from uh, a famous horror movie which is uh, Let the Right One In. I have watched the movie a couple of years ago, I didn't really enjoy it but I understand that the book is very different and much better uh, so I wanted to to try it out and it's written by John I'm going to mispronounce it but uh, John Achvide Lind Lindwitz I, I think he was a Norwegian author I'm, I'm not sure but I will put it somewhere here it does even says the times even says the new Stephen King don't miss it well um, I'm excited and uh, I hope it's not too much like Stephen King related I like when authors are inspired by other authors but they still have like something original of course so yeah I'm excited to find it out it is uh, quite a big book so I don't know when I will read it but I think more towards the autumn season and I have this beautiful collection of stories by Algernon Blackwood I think that's a beautiful name it's not it's not definitely not a name that you hear often but yeah I came to know this author by uh, another book which was an, um, a non-fiction book about women in um, speculative fiction and this author was mentioned as one of the inspirations some, for some of those women and I wanted to read it as well. He is quite famous for his short stories and um, for like weird fiction and horror fiction and it's again a very beautiful book so yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to read this one. Then I have a book by, it's, it's a manga by Junji Ito and I, like every year I read a manga by Junji Ito, but this one will be a little bit different. So this one is called No Longer Human and it's different because it's based on a uh, quite famous Japanese um, author, Osamu Dazai, who wrote No Longer Human and it's part of Japanese literature. Um, I have read Another book by Osami Dasai, which touches on the same concept, self-portraits in Dutch. <laughs> so I don't know if the title is the same in English. But No Longer Human is a story, of, like an autobiographical, but also a fictional story about the author's life. And it's quite depressing. I have watched the anime as well. So what I want to do for this book, and I think I'm going to do it this year, but um, <laughs> I have to be in the right mood for it. I want to read uh, No Longer Human by Osamu Dozai first, I already own that book, and then read the manga, which will take me a couple of days I think, and then watch the anime again and compare the three medias together. But that will be a difficult project because the book is very depressing and I think the manga it's, itself will be also very depressing. So yeah, it's something that 
I kind of have to pick a time for. Then I have this beautiful box of the classic of Jules Verne. And uh, yeah, I really like this collection. It's still in plastic. Um, I, I will keep it this way for a while before I start reading it, but it contains some of his uh, famous stories. And I like this collection boxes for some authors because um, yeah, sometimes you want to start out with an author and you just don't know where to start. And this kind of boxes, they always provide you with the most famous works of the best work. So yeah, I always like that. And I, also I have uh, another <laughs> box by uh, Lovecraft, a collection. I do own other books, mostly in Dutch, but so far I haven't read much of him. Um, here and there maybe a short story, but not like books. And uh, I do have the Necromonicon, which is like a very big book. Still haven't read it, um, but I'm very interested in reading it because it's uh, it's kind, kind of like a cult book. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I also now have this one. The one that I'm most excited about, I think, it's I think the Call of Cthulhu. Because also again, it's uh, an inspiration, I think, for a lot of other stories and like weird media. So uh, yeah, I think I will read that one first. Then another compilation of classic horror tales. And this book is absolutely beautiful. And yeah, the inside is also very nice. And it contains some of the stories I already own, but I just I like this edition. But it contains very interesting writers. Of course, Edgar Allan Poe is in here, but also Bram Stoker, Arthur Conan Doyle, also Algernon and Blackwood, which I just showed you. And uh, The Vampire by John William Polidori. And The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkin, Perkins Gilman. I own that book separately or like the, the story. But yeah, it's also in here. So I think it's a good collection to start out with horror classics. And then the last book. <laughs> the, I don't know which number, but definitely above 40. It's, it's one that I really wanted to have for a collection. I don't know if I'm actually going to read it but it's more like a collectible item and it's the complete poems of Edgar Allan Poe. I do have a penguin classics that I'm currently reading in and there I did some to make some notes or highlight some things but this one is just a beautiful addition to have and it's complete so it does contain everything and I also have the complete version in Dutch so yeah <laughs> this was just just a beautiful book to have. Maybe I will read some of the stories in here, but I really don't want to damage it. So it's just, uh, it's going on my shelf for standing there for a long while. Those were all of the books. Yeah, it's, it's quite a lot. So I still have to think about where I'm going to, where I'm going to put it. Um, the bookshelves are quite full right now as it is. Uh, I think I'm going to rearrange the shelf behind me, but otherwise I really don't know where to put all of these books. Um, I'm not a type that unhauls books because most of the books that I get or buy myself I really like. So it's not that I'm buying things that I do not enjoy. When I want to try out a book that I'm not sure of if I would really like it, I buy it on my e-reader or see if I can um, read it on my e-reader for free um, because it's easier to try it out that way. But most of the books that I already own, I really like them. So I just have to find some place. I hope you liked this video. And let me know which books you are excited to read yourself or you want me to review. But um, yeah, I will try to read as much as I can this year. I will upload, I think next week, my reading goals for this year and my reading TBR. Some of these books that you have seen now will be in that video. Some of them won't. Thank you for watching. If you like this kind of books <laughs> and you want to see my reviews or uh, you want to see more of this kind of books, uh, please subscribe to this channel and if you like the video please hit the like button and I will see you next time. Have a nice reading week. Goodbye.